Hi, I'm Richard, and today I'm going to do a little uh, discussion about crayons. C-R-A-N or C-R-A-N-N. -N. <clears throat> now, in um, I believe in Scottish Gaelic, if you have that double N, instead of uh, crown, it would be crown. But uh, it's Irish, so I'm not sure the actual pronunciation of the Irish language. C-R-A-N or C-R-A-N-N. -N. And it's an Ellen pipe thing and uh, that's been uh, kind of adapted onto whistle and flute. <clears throat> and one thing to know about it is that on the Ellen pipes, because a crayon is, is most commonly played on bottom D, your, your bell note, your lowest note. And on the Ellen pipes, Bottom D has two distinctive timbres, one they call hard bottom D and one they call soft bottom D. And this grace note, which is the upper hand ring finger, is kind of an actuator for hard bottom D. It can really make hard bottom D pop. Uh, um, <clears throat> so you have to realize that on, whereas on the whistle and flute, all the grace notes you can play on bottom D are more or less created equal on the Illin pipes, that one has a special uh, purpose. And the basic kind of rule, quote unquote, of the uh, crayon is that you can use grace, you can use a grace note with this finger, the upper hand ring finger, the lower hand index finger, the lower hand middle finger, any of those, but they can be in any order. So as long as you don't play the same finger twice, because then you're starting to sound like a trill, and a crayon is definitely not a trill. So you can have several um, Illin Pipers who have crayons that pretty much sound the same, but if you were to actually analyze their fingers, each of them might be doing a different sequence of grace notes. <clears throat> so for example, you can go upwards, go down. I've seen um, fairly common to go back and forth to go now one of the things about that is it's kind of encoded into the fingering of the Illin pipes is this that finger sequence, grace note sequence, is part of um, other ornaments, so uh, tight triplets. So a lot. So that's a motion that Illin pipers are very used to doing. <clears throat> now I once saw one Illin piper whose crayons were these same two fingers back and forth. He didn't use this finger at all. And his, uh, he actually discussed it. His philosophy was he wanted to keep that finger free, that grace note free for um, cutting bottom D and, and actuating the hard bottom D and allowed the lower hand to take care of the cranning itself. And there's also, you can have crayons for sure with four grace notes instead of three. But... Um, But I'm just going to talk about the, the more or less standard three grace note crayons. The or, or, oops, whatever sequence of fingers you, you want to use, it doesn't matter. <clears throat> now, the thing is on the uh, Ellen pipes, all of those you can play just as the same on E. So if you can play. Whatever, you can play the crayons in there. However they fit into the, uh, the, the timing of the tune. <clears throat> now I will say that when I first... Oh, and then on the Illin pipes, 
the middle D is played, you have a thumb hole back there, which you don't have on the whistle. So what the whistle can do that the Illin pipes can't do is the Illin pipes can also play uh, crayons on middle D. So, because same fingering, so now of course middle D you can play with that finger on or off. It's a different effect because with this finger off, these um, grace notes are in effect making C's. So it's a series of grace notes that are slightly below the pitch of the D. If you play a, a closed middle D with all the fingers down, those are uh, grace notes are higher. Mm, that one's still that one's lower, I think, still. Anyway, it's a different effect. So, uh, so that's the um, the actual kind of a full three uh, grace note crayon. You can also play. I call them semi crayons. I don't know if there's if that's an actual thing, but that is a kind of a crayon like thing that's only played with two grace notes. So it's a short crayon, I guess you could call it, or a semi-crayon. And where I myself use the shorter crayon is like a little ornament, like a little grace note. Um, So it's not really kind of a crayon, it's uh, more like just sort of like a little triplet effect, I think. <clears throat> now, one thing I'll say is that when I first started playing in the 70s, except for somebody like Matt Malloy, who I think was consciously uh, borrowing Illin pipe techniques on the flute, the old school flute players and whistle players I was listening to didn't play crayons. In, in, in that sense, the, the, the sense that I've been demonstrating and talking about. So instead of going, um, which are actual crayons, they had this funny thing that they would do, not funny, but it was, I, I just called it a flute player's crayon. It was kind of a crayon uh, equivalent so instead of going, um, it would go. So like, um, and they're just going. But there's something about it where, um, it, it, it can really kind of sound like a crayon if you have the timing. Or something. So you'll, you'll hear that with some of the old school players. And um, in, in, when the tune's flowing along quickly, you may not even realize. You might your ear might say, oh, they're playing a crayon, and you might be thinking of a, uh, the way the crayon is played on the, uh, on the pipes, but actually they're doing this other kind. <clears throat> and let me see if that's really that much different on a low, on a low D.
uh, more or less equivalent. Just be aware that you might hear uh, either one being played by whistle or flute player. If you have any other questions, just leave them in the, in the comments below.